What I will say about the pellet industry is the clinicians who are prescribing these are preying on your insecurities and physicians' lack of education and knowledge on FDA-approved hormone therapy, and they are using you as guinea pigs and cash cows. Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. If you don't know me, I'm a board certified internist. I have many degrees. I did a fellowship in women's health at Cleveland Clinic and I have started and launched two and now a virtual menopause platform. Now, you as the consumer, I don't necessarily blame you for getting pellets, right? You were looking for help. You were smart, inquisitive, curious. Your doctor said, I'm so sorry. There's nothing that we could do for you, but you found someone who could help you. Now, at Midi Health, we only do FDA-approved hormone therapy and very rarely compound anything except for testosterone, which is not FDA-approved in the United States. And that's because these medications are much safer, have been studied, and we know that are going to be reliable and prevent chronic diseases. If you're on pellets and want to come off, come see us for a second opinion. I don't know if that made a lot of sense. Pellets have been in medicine since the 1940s. Why pellets are better, not every time. And I have problems with pellets too. I don't use them all the time. I do use them. Why, why pellets are tricky is, is that once it's in, it's in. And it's in for the full four months. And you can't stop it. And so if you're doing an injectable, you're going to be able to stop it. You're like, I don't like this. Stop. But if you put the pellet in someone, you're stuck with it. So pellets are, there are commitments to it. They've been used for longer than this woman's been alive. And they are FDA approved testosterone. There's a Testopel, I think is the brand name for it. Um, as so, so FDA approved just means that the medication has been approved uh, for a specific indication. Uh, but we've been doing off-label forever. Off-label is a, a significant part of medicine, a huge portion of medicine is, is off-label use. A huge amount of medicine is off-label. So there are times when pellets are indicated. When you do an injection of testosterone or estrogen, uh, you're going to have a curve to it. There's going to be a high and then a little bit low. And so that curve, when you get a higher or low, that's not normal physiological. And that's where you're going to have a chance of side effects because it has that curve to it. So, so yes, you know, Pellets don't have that. Pellets are inserted. There's a little bit of a curve, but it's much less. So you have less chance of bioconverting that testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So, so it stays in its lane a little bit better. And you don't have that, that big of a problem. And with men, it's not going to aromatize to estradiol as well. The thing about pellets for men is that if you're going to give a guy pellets, you look at like, you know, some cases like up to 15 or 16 of these pellets, like size of a Tic Tac, inserted into your, your, your glute, your body fat, your fat around your gluteus and that's not pleasant that's like buckshot you know and and even when done sterile and clean and beautiful your body may look at it like i don't like this and push it out like a splinter it's not an infection your body's just like get rid of this and i've seen that happen too and this is a waste of money and, and energy it's not a great procedure now women when we do pellets we're doing like one or two you know so the chances of extrusion when your body re re rejects it much lower there are studies with millions of people who have done pellets that it has the lowest complication rate and the highest compliance rate. Look at the citations below. I'll, I'll cite it in there for you. Hormone clinics, what she has right in here, hormone clinics do prey upon your insecurities. That's true. There's a huge problem with anti-aging clinics preying upon your insecurities of aging. They're preying upon your masculinity. They're preying upon your attractiveness. She's right, and that is not a good thing. Medicine should be centered on you. Like, how are you? How are you feeling? What's going on with you? What do the labs show, show us? And does the therapy help you based upon lab work and symptoms? Doing hormones is a personal thing you do between you and your physician based upon your symptoms, your lab work, and the results you get with the therapy. It's a very personal thing. I think that scaring people off of it because it seems like it's a fad or it's not safe or something like that, it's, it's basically trying to paint a big brush over everything. Again, it's very personal. <laughs>